Hey, Coach, how you doing? Hey, brother. Um, wanted to ask you about Husky. Obviously, I mean, the news with Marcelino and, and, and Bryant kind of stepping up in that spot. As far as the, the, the depth behind him, do you see one guy kind of doing it like you did last year, or could it be a thing where you just do like a committee approach uh, as far as, you know, when Bryant comes out and you need to, you know, get somebody in there, some reps? Yeah, I think it'll be um, – I think we will – try to get the right people on the field versus the right personnel groupings. Um, so we want to make sure that we maximize our roster and our personnel and, and what we're asking guys to do. And so I've uh, been really pleased with Fitz the last um, two weeks here. I thought he's, he, you know, uh, early on in fall camp and uh, in, in the summer, he there were some times where he didn't get out. He was out for one reason or another. And so, uh, just really kind of hitting his groove these last two weeks here and uh, been pleased with him. But uh, I, I think it's my job to make sure we maximize our personnel uh, and get the right people on the field for the right situations. And so we're certainly going to do that. Kevin, then Zach. Yeah, Coach, I'm curious how much college football you're watching around the country, uh, how much it's making you cringe seeing some of the defenses. And if you've studied – uh, what maybe some of the defenses that are playing well, like say Georgia is doing uh, in terms of uh, any trends uh, that could carry over in the season? You mean, what are, are people scoring points or? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is. I mean, it's, um, I think that we do have um, the, the fortune to be able to learn from other people's, um, you know, uh, uh, demise, I guess, in some ways. Uh, I think, you know, we, we get every we get film on every uh, team in the country. And so I just pull up games that I saw on TV and I pull them up a little bit more detail during the week. I think that tempo is is a factor. I think um, not being able to tackle as much live. You know, you think about it, we're getting similar practices, but we're not getting as many with pads. Um, those things are a factor. And I think offenses are really good, you know, and they, they uh, attack the field in a lot of different directions. And you've had some of the best minds in the country in the game of football that have had a lot of time on their hands uh, over the last eight months. And so you're seeing some creative things that people are doing uh, to maximize space and, and players' abilities. So all that to be said, you know, you, you referenced Georgia. That's a good one. Some good buddies of mine are, are on that staff. Um, obviously, Dan Lanning, um, uh, Trey Scott, and I GA together. So uh, I spent a good bit of time with them in the offseason. We talked through a lot of things. Uh, we're, we have very similar philosophies in terms of how we attack things. Um, love to have a couple of their personnel. You know what I mean? They got some, they got some big monsters there uh, as well. But, um, but just I think being aware of what teams are trying to do, uh, the tempo in which they use to do it. Uh, and I think now – Days you, you just got to be focused on uh, limiting uh, the opponent's big plays, right? None for touchdowns, and at the same time, you've got to create negatives, right? You can't let teams go second and five, second and four, you know what I mean, all, all the way down the field. Uh, at the same time, you can't give up, you know, 60-yard bombs, which we've seen plenty of the, those over the last couple of weeks. Zach and Jim? Hey, Kane, uh, I was curious, you've talked about – feeling good about your depth along the defensive line. I think you said you feel like you've got maybe five guys at both end and tackle that you feel really good about. Is that kind of the ideal for you, or, or would you like it, I guess, to be something where maybe, you know, especially as you think about maybe building a pass rush kind of for the short season, one or two guys, you know, really sort of step up and, and kind of become guys that you just think we're not going to be able to get him off the field a lot because he's, he's playing so well. Yeah, well, I think you got to be aware of what a player's skill set is along the defensive line, especially when it comes to run and pass responsibilities. Obviously, there's certain guys that we would like in there defending the run versus we have personnel where there's some guys that are pretty gifted in some of their, their pass ability. And so it's our job to make sure we get the right groupings on the field in those situations. But I, I honestly, I think from a rep-based standpoint, it's hard to get more than five ready for two positions, right? So if you think about interior tackle, you know, I mean, you can't rep three deep across the board. You got to you gotta find a way to get two and a half deep. Uh, and that way you can disseminate those reps for that fifth guy, whoever that is, um, uh, in terms of week to week to get what you need installed. All right, Jim, then John. Hey, Coach. Uh, normally, uh, you get the preseason or pre-conference games to, to get tuned up. Defense, obviously, uh, a key to, to winning here. 
uh, without those games and starting off with an opponent like Penn State, how, what cliff notes can you use for your players to get them to jump past those three weeks you would normally have of games to have to play at the highest level possible right off the bat? Well, I think we do have to rely some on the experience that we had. I mean, think about if we had jumped into that a year ago, you know, that would have been a very scary scenario. Um, and, uh, and so we certainly, you know, of course, we took, took our licks uh, in, in a lot of situations last year just with a lack of experience. I thought we did not start well in certain games. I thought the overarching theme, as, as you look at uh, last season, I didn't think we start started uh, clean enough or fast enough. And so we got to make sure we're calling the right things and our players are uh, executing the right things in those situations. And so um, that has been a huge emphasis for us as a defense and what we're trying to get done and accomplish. We can do that a couple of different ways, but ultimately it's their ability to recognize and go execute. And I think to some degree, we got to just be able to lean on, you know, uh, a number of banked reps uh, from, from a year ago to get ourselves to that point. Um, the other thing I would say is just the ability to tackle, tackle in space, tackle in the box, don't give up bull yards, you know, those, those extra yards after contact because your feet aren't in the ground. We, we have worked tackling more than, than, uh, than anybody or excuse me, anywhere I've been before uh, and feel like we're doing a lot of things to, uh, to kind of maximize a game-like scenario in terms of tackling. All right, John, then Peaks. Um, obviously, we're talking about all the points that are being scored, but I know there's a lot of high hopes for this defense because of all the players and the talent that you bring back. I mean, how much do you do in terms of goal setting, in terms of saying we want to be like a top five in, in this category or that category, want to hold teams to this or that? Yeah, I mean, I think Coach Allen, you know, has always made it clear he wants to have a top 25 defense here year in and year out. I think we took steps in that direction a year ago. Um, uh, but, uh, but certainly, when I, you know, I think we finished like 36th and 42nd in total in scoring defense and all those things. So with a young group, that's encouraging. I think we got a chance to do that. I don't know what national stats are going to look like this year. Uh, Obviously, teams playing a lot of conference games and all that. Um, but I do know the standard in this league. And uh, in my mind, there's a certain standard that I want us to be able to play to. Uh, I have not talked about that with the defensive players. We talk about uh, improving daily, staying focused on the task at hand, responding to adversity. You know what I mean? Because I think that's where good defense – even great defenses give up big plays and have bad series. You know what I mean? But they find a way to respond to adversity. Um, and adjust. And I, and I think, you know, sometimes we can make that first drive or first play of the game out to be a bigger thing than what it actually is outside of the first of about 80 plays in a game, you know, and there's a lot of things that happen in a game that we got to be able to adjust and respond to. And I think we're a more mature team. Uh, I think we're a more uh, mature staff and I'm a more mature coordinator within this league to understand that. All right, Peaks and Dylan. Coach, what was your uh, evaluation of the the most recent scrimmage? What did you like and what you did, uh, didn't like? And uh, also wanted to ask about Aaron Casey because uh, Coach Allen brought him up uh, yes, yeah. uh, earlier this week. Yeah. So uh, starting with your first question, I, I think uh, I was uh, – you know, we, we are doing a good job of, of just understanding what we're trying to accomplish and we're executing and, and limiting opponents, just big plays. And obviously Mike Penix is a guy that can pick you apart and do a lot of different creative things. Uh, but if we can limit explosive plays, we got a chance to be, uh, to be good as well as I think we're doing a good job of creating negative plays over two games. And so I'm telling you, I mean, the more I watch football and the question got asked, you, you look around the country, Limit explosives, right, and create enough of your own. And, 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 and takeaways are a piece of that as well. But you've got to find a way to get somebody to second and 10, second and eight. Uh, love to get to second and 13 if we can, right, and then find a way to get off the field in three downs, you know. Um, I think even when teams are driving and they're moving the ball, just our guys understanding, hey, settle in, settle in, hold the line, hold the line, and then boom, all right, we'll find a way to finish them off. Um, uh, even when teams have got a little momentum against us, uh, to me, that's a big piece. Uh, to your question about Aaron Casey, um, probably is excited about Ace uh, in terms of how he's uh, uh, progressed over these last six months here as anybody. Thought he's taken his game to another level. He's a very dynamic talent, obviously, to be 236 pounds at 6'2 and to be able to run like he does. But he actually understands what we're doing from a run fit perspective. 
he is dynamic in the passing game. Um, and so a really good addition to those linebackers that already played uh, uh, this past year. Um, just he's he just needs to keep playing, but but he's he's going to be out there on on Saturday. All right, Dylan, and then we'll wrap up with Matt. Hey, Coach. Um, Tom Allen also brought up Devon Matthews that stood out on Saturday. He said he made some key plays that you guys will need him to make this season. Uh, yeah. I guess just maybe what are what are maybe some of those plays you guys think you need him to make this year, and what have you liked from him overall in that secondary? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, simple f- answer is I need him to do his job in the run and pass game, right? But uh, but I think he is one of those guys that we saw as a true freshman. He has a he has a knack for getting to the ball and making plays. Thought a year ago. Um, there were times where he was indecisive uh, for a number of reasons, um, and and we see a totally different player right now. A guy that's uh, knows exactly where to put his eyes. He's a great communicator on the back end. He understands what he can do well and what he doesn't do as well, and so he tries to use those things to maximize his ability on the field. Um, and he is a very athletic, rangy player in terms of just the size to speed ratio of what you want a safety to look like. Um, there's not many that are as pretty as that dude. So uh, I just think he's playing at a very high level right now. He understands what he does really well, uh, and uh, and he he just fits within within what we're trying to do schematically. Uh, and now he's making a lot of plays, which is very exciting. All right, Matt, wrap us up. Coach, I want to ask you about um, about Reese Taylor. Obviously, yeah. the guy came in as a big time offensive player in high school and uh, played mainly that as a freshman out of necessity and made some plays. The interception at Maryland, the PBU at the end of the Purdue game in regulation mm-hmm. was huge. Um, but what have you seen from his progress and, and how, how excited are you for to see him this year and hopefully, you know, stay healthy the entire year? Well, as, as excited as I am about a guy like Taiwan Mullen and think how highly I think of his instincts. To me, Reese Taylor is right there in that conversation. I mean, and, and I, I think it has to do with just a guy that's played a lot of football in his life. You know, he's seen offense. Uh, he understands what offenses are trying to do from a recognition standpoint. But he's so in t- in instinctive. He's a very physical player in the run game. Um, you know, uh, obviously there's times where we ask those guys to – uh, jump in there and mix it up um, and he's just he's crafty you know what I mean he finds ways to to be able to get people on the ground and he's very physical and instinctive player I, to me playmakers we got to find ways to get them around the ball and when you talk about instinctive playmakers within our defense I mean he's in that conversation um, at, you know with anybody on the field so I think he understands our concepts better uh, and when you have wisdom matched with instincts, um, that can be a very deadly combination for a dynamic corner. And I think he's very on his way to becoming that.